Shalom family. How's everybody doing? I am your brother Haji Go Lightly. I want to welcome you to the Go Lightly Perspective, um, where we try to discuss many different topics. Uh, we share our optics on issues um, that are facing our community. We're so honored to have our brother Lorenz to join us today to share uh, some of his experiences in ministry, where he draws uh his, his desire, his passion, his example for ministry and even, you know, what ministry may mean to him. So we give all praise to the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Yod, He, Wav, He, and in reverence and deference of his only begotten son for this moment in time that he knew would be so. That being said, my brother Lorvins, welcome to the Go Lightly Perspective. How you doing? I Shalom, shalom, uh, ah, you know, I'm doing great. You know, I can't complain. Um, ain't no sense in doing that. Uh, the most High has really been good to me. You know, I pray blessings upon you and your family and your house mm -hmm. and all who you deal with. Um, you know, I'm just ecstatic that to be alive today, I can Yes, man. It's, you yes, know, I, I've been watching you. Well, you know, we've known each other for quite some time, many, many years. And over the course of years, uh, being in relationship with a brother, you have a time to to test his spirit, to prove his spirit. If a brother really does believe the things that he says that he believes. And when it comes to you, I am absolutely convinced that this is not for show. It is not for money. It is not for any other thing than to please the most high. And I, you know, I don't say that lightly because I've, you know, we've been around and we know people, we've seen people and interacted with people that have ulterior motives. Okay. Have ulterior motives, okay? Oh, we all have. I mean, if anyone says that they have not dealt with anyone that may have had ill intentions or um, misguided uh, intentions, then you'd be lying. Uh, whether you'd be in a walk or before the walk, so you're, 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 you're correct. Okay. So let's just, uh, we're going to dive right into it, man. You know, we, we talk about the benefit of a family and fathers and, you know, I, I would love for you to share because you share your ministry with people and they're familiar with your song ministry and the way that you labor to serve the people. Um, and you do it with such excellence, with such humility and it blesses me. And that's why I'm, delighted and honored to link arms with you when I can, but would you share for the people your example and where you get that drive for ministry from? And, um, you know, just growing up in a house uh, with my father and just watching him, because I'll say this, when you see me, you really see the split image of my father because everyone says I look exactly like him. But I've also, um, I've gotten a lot of his demeanors. I've gotten a lot of his ways. Um, he's a very patient, he's a very long suffering. I mean, he's a loving and generous man. That I can say that about my dad uh, because I lived that, I've experienced it and I've seen it. Uh, but not only through you know, people merely saying it about him or maybe perhaps, but just seeing him in action through his, through his actions, you can see that. And so I learned a lot, not just by his instructions alone, but through the actions that he, um, throughout the years and the way that he behaved and the way that he comports himself with his wife, with his family, with people, um, obviously in church when we was going to church. So, you know, we, I seen all of that. And so that, May, that I was influenced by that by quite a bit. So you can see a lot of that in me. So when people see me and you see the way that I interact and things of that nature, it is from a genuine nature because that's all I know. You see what I'm saying? Love is all I know. Compassion is all I know. Mercy and all these things is what I've been taught. It's not to say that we all didn't have our experiences, but because of the ground that I... He, he led for me, allow me to overcome whatever might be contrary to how really the Father in the Shamaim or the heavens wants us to be. So I embody that from my dad. 
That's beautiful, man. Hallelujah. Shout out to patriarchy and for fathers that have had such a valuable and positive influence on their sons and on their daughters. We don't get the opportunity to hear that as much. And, and I love so many things that you said. I love all of what you said. But the fact that, you know, you seen him moving, being the consummate example. And even though you may have a different level of understanding, that has not caused you to rank him lower or to feel as if you're, you're greater because of this different uh, understanding that you have, um, even in regards to being the people of the book. So many men that I know have made that error that they have now uh, jumped a hurdle and uh, uh, superseded their father, their mother, simply because of identity. So how has that been beneficial for you in maintaining the quality of that leadership, of that, of that relationship and remaining a son in this dynamic? In this dynamic. I mean, for one, it's an instruction. It's, it's a commandment that we must honor our mm. father and that we must honor our mother. Mm. And that's for, that's foremost. So being that that's an instruction and, with that instruction comes some consequences. You know, you know, scripture talks about honoring your mother, you're going to live long. Um, scripture talks about if you don't honor your father, then it's like an abomination. So the thing about it is it's, 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 it is mandatory. It is an obedience to the higher power that my father, the, 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 the God of my father, you see what I'm saying? Um, even though, I've come into the knowledge and I know who we are and things of that nature that still don't supersede the idea of my dad being my authoritative figure. You see what I'm saying? Um, because whenever, even though I have a lot of this understanding, probably more than he does for the most part, um, when I see him and when I'm in his presence, I must decrease. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have to, because he's my father. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, and I still have to honor him and give him the reverence. So I always have to be listening when he's around. And if he wants me to speak, uh, then I will speak. And if it's something that the Most High has put in me to where me and him is having a conversation, then we're having a conversation. But at the end of the day, he's my father. I have to be obedient to what he says. And I have to honor him as long as it doesn't circumvent what is the Most High. Uh, matter of fact, what he's taught me. You see what I'm saying? So right. um, that's how I go about that, man. It's, it's you know. Man, that's beautiful, man. I, and I man, love hearing. Man. Just a clarion call for humility. You know, there's a saying that, you know, only one man can be in the house at one time. <laughs> there can only be one man in the house. And that's the father. So, you know, even when when my father comes to my house, I immediately take like a second tier role and I defer to him. Not because I can't let my light shine and um, I don't run my house because I'm so confident and competent in running my house. See, so many times we don't even look at the way that the father structured family from the book of Genesis. And those that that know Torah, they hear Torah when it's spoken, even if they're not citing chapter and verse. And what you're explaining is you even alluded to it earlier. You worship the God of your fathers, that children are not born with God concepts. These God concepts are given to them. Then you get to a certain age of maturity, then you can, you know, evaluate these things and question these things. But that still doesn't mean that you question your father or you go back and you try to correct him. Now, how have you and have you been able, and, the, and I'm framing it this way, to try to help uh, those that listen to this broadcast? How have you been able and have you been able to share greater understanding in terms of identity and scriptural interpretation from the Israelite perspective, from the, the Israelite tradition with your father? How has that worked for you? 
Um, actually, I have, but not in the sense of like where I go in and I say, "Hey, Dad, you know we're Israelites," or "Hey, Dad, you know." I go by my action. Um, you didn't. You didn't no cry loud and really spare not. Uh, you didn't cry loud and spare not. Uh, nah. <laughs> I mean, you know, in every situation, it's gonna be different. <laughs> in every situation, it's gonna be different. You know, with my dad, he's a very calm. You know, he knows when to be a lion. You see what I'm saying? And so there's a certain decorum that we go by, a certain level of respect mm. in how we communicate with each other. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's, it's it's shown through our senses and the way that we speak with each other. And so with my dad, it was more of he questioning me based on my actions. And he's seen the growth of my obedience to him and he seen my growth, you know, with my wife, you know, because even me and my wife, we was going through situation and he would basically somewhat reprimand me, you know, and now in this walk, I've pivoted to more of an obedience towards scripture and how I treat my wife. And so he can see that. You see what I'm saying? I've a lot of my ways and the way that I act is pivoted towards obedience to the scripture. From what I eat, uh, not celebrating pagan holidays. And then he asks, well, why are you not coming to the family function? Now that it presents an opportunity, say, Dad, look, I know we grew up, grew up, grew up a certain way. And, you know, and I respect that. I respect family. You know that, Dad. But you've also taught me to respect the most high more. And so they are, you know, like pagan holidays and things of the nature. And I've gone and explained some of these things to him. Then he said, you know what? I understand, sir. So that to him makes him even more proud because he's like, wow, the foundation that I gave my son, he's taking it to another level. You see what I'm saying? Even though my father may not have that complete understanding of what the scripture is saying, then he's able to see that as I elevate his name. You see what I'm saying? Through me thereby really elevating our true source, which is Abaya. And so when he sees all of this, it always creates opportunity for us to be able to speak because even the scripture says we have to respect and honor our father, even though they lack some of these understanding. If you read Sirach 3, yes. it talks about that. Yeah, absolutely. And we can jump over there in a second, man. Um, that You know, your story... Is very similar to my story where I, I came together with my family and I told them, I said, hey, this is the last Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving that I'm going to be at. I love y'all. It ain't have anything to do with you. I, I love family, but I cannot come together on this day. Oh, well, okay. You know, I had a thousand questions and you know, we talked about Christmas and all the other holidays. And so I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I won't be back for Christmas either. <laughs> I won't be back for New Year's dinner. I won't be back for, for Mother's Day or for Father's Day. Uh, not just the days that don't benefit me, you know. I'm not doing the Easter. I'm not doing any of those. So, And here is why. In a subtle way, yet convicted way. way because your parents are going to challenge your convictions and it's not a bad thing because if somebody Absolutely. can talk you out of something then you really don't believe it that's that's right. my position that's right. that's, so if they challenge you all the time it's not you know brothers and sisters to try to demean you or disrespect you it's to see if you really believe what you say that you're believing because I know plenty of people that, that came in his walk, they were in it one, two, three years. They were on fire and then they just fizzled out. They go back into the ways right. of the world. So back the they're world. back celebrating the holidays, but they're you were able to maintain and to share with them. And then um, it caused him to look at it and in a way where he saw his work, growing and maturing in you is that what you're saying exactly and actually the prime example of that too would be um my dad has been doing ministry work for the last 20 years he goes to haiti every year and he feeds the people he always co-signs or i would say sponsor children um tuitions um to go to school and things of that nature 
Now, we've always helped on the back end. And since the pandemic started, you know, traveling has been kind of, you know, restricted. So my dad hasn't been able to go, well, at least this year or last year. And I took upon myself, even through the counsel of others, somebody like you who actually recommended that I do something, especially for the Bahamas and things of that nature. And you saw the calling and the fact that I had that um, connection there. And in Haiti, you were very instrumental in telling me, hey, I think the most I may be calling you to do this, you know, only to prophetically, you didn't even know that my dad did this, you know, so I had no idea. I started to take charge of that because yeah, you, that's what I'm saying. You you had no idea. And so it's like, and I was like, I know that had to be from the most side because this is what my dad does. And now I'm taking it um, upon my shoulder because, because in a sense, it's a burden for my dad in a sense, you know, he's getting to that age where he, he'll no longer be able to do that. And it's funny because when you read the scripture, honor that father and mother, that honor word basically means to carry your burden of your, of your dad or your parents. And so now I'm able to carry that burden and most eyes given me favor um, in such a way that people now you know, out of the goodness of the heart, help me with these type of missions. So, man, I praise the most high for allowing me to even walk in those shoes of my father. Because it's some big shoes, man. When you're talking about, um, he didn't even have to ask me to do these things. I just, the spirit just came upon me through even your uh, ability to help encourage me in that way. And now here I am carrying this stuff on my shoulder. So, um, with the help of our father. So, man, so that's an example of something where you see I'm helping him carry his burden and honoring him, you know? Man, I love that, man. I always have this saying that, that man. I always have if the, if the father, if, you, well, let's, let's, let me reframe it. If someone is saying that the father is uh, motivating them, directing them to do something, and they can accomplish it in their generation, and that's all they need. My response typically typically is, that's not the father. And I say that because the father moves generationally. He wants this to go from generation to generation. We always venerate our fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah. We venerate these men, but it's because the father chose one, and then he just continued to um, those fathers uh, introduce their sons to the Most High. They had heirs to try to help them continue the work, continue the legacy, continue the struggle. And that's exactly what you're saying is that as they mature, there's a certain inability that they have simply due to age. And that's just part of the process. But that's where, you know, that son that is an heir picks up the work of that father. And I love how you framed it in the beginning. You said, when you see me, you see my father. <laughs> well, we could have I mean, stopped the interview right I'm there. being explicit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's true, though. Like, you, you look at the picture. But not only through just the, the physical aspect, but even through the action. And so, you know, all praise. Okay. All oh, praise, man. You know what? I want to I wanna read, you know, you referenced a little bit of that Ciroc 6. And, you know, I said that this was going to be a quick video. I know that you've been, uh, you just got back in town. You've been in North Carolina. You've been out ministering. Uh, shout out to the brothers that uh, that just got reinstalled, uh, that got installed as uh, as the Moray there in North Carolina, right? Uh, as the Moray there in North Carolina, right? Man, that was beautiful to see. Yes, man. He's... And it's crazy. We're talking about father dynamics. It was amazing for me to see that for the very first time in installing someone, you know, that's carrying the legacy of their father. You see what I'm saying? His father started something. I mean, he has the same father's name, James Byers II. And he was installed. And just to see that ceremony and just to see that him being co-signed, not himself exalting himself. But he's been installed by being proven. You see what I'm saying? Right. Not just him saying, okay, I'm a moray, or not just him saying I'm a rabbi or anything like that. 
they have to go through the, being a student. They had to go through that process. You see what I'm saying? So it was, mm -hmm. man, I had to fight all kind of tears, Aki. You know, I'm a man's man. And it's like, I had to fight tears, bro, because it was so emotional and perfect and so scripture that I was like, man, all Israel need to see this. To the fact, man, I'm going to edit my video. I'm going to put that particular excerpt on my channel because people need to see that. It's so beautiful, bro. Man, hallelujah. I may have to reach out to the brother. Man, you know, hallelujah. I met him in, in Detroit when we were up in Detroit um, with the uh, Greater Awakening yep, family. You remember that? And, uh, you know, him and his yeah, you know, the that. song that yeah, him there. and his, his wife did, man, that thing blessed me, man. And, you know, I, I was throwing in music here and there, but, you know, I may definitely, you know, reach out to the brother because I believe in patriarchy. And I also believe in having one that is greater endorse your mission and your ministry. You know, you got, I, I love the way you framed it. You know, it's not someone that just takes up the mantle and says, well, you know what? I've read the whole, the scriptures. I understand who I am. Now I'm a more. And you ask, well, who co-signed you? Who taught you this mindset? Where did you get this from? And you, and if you just say YouTube and I just got it directly from the most high, it's like, ah, oh, okay. I'm not going, I'm, I'm not going to say that you did it. But it just has another level of authenticity when you've been initiated into a school of thought by one that has been in that school of thought and has credibility. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, you even look at Paul, like people are like, oh, yeah, the Mashiach taught him. Yeah, but Mashiach is not the most high. So it, it, you can still have a, a prominent teacher. It may not be exactly like your dad, but someone that have that dad figure you know what i'm saying that spiritual figure um whereas uh it, it, from a father standpoint even paul was taught for many many different years to be installed in the position where he's at you have to you see what i'm saying so the father just don't do stuff nearly willy say okay nah he's gonna send somebody to co-sign that that's just the way it goes there's no direct download i've never seen in scripture where the father just to read directly to the people he always deal with someone. Always there's a media yeah. in the mix. He uses a man. And you know, like even with Moses at the feet. <laughs> a man or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he used a know, burning bush. I, you know? <laughs> Straight up. You know, our people get so spiritual oftentimes. <laughs> and you know, they they want to get this direct download and they want to go around uh men because really they have a low key grievance and problem with men and usually it's men that have a problem with their fathers so i'm thankful that i'm a son of william who was the son of daniel who was the son of freeman who was the son of george peace be upon my patriarchs i thank the most high for them i thank him for my mother for my matriarch the womb that i came from but i'm i also venerate and thank the most high for my spiritual father the honorable dr thomas murray who has taught me and introduced me into, excuse me, and introduce me into this patriarchal mindset, him being the consummate patriarch. So I had to learn it from a man. Like, you know, I've had conversations with people and they were like, man, you know, you, you were, you were here, you know, you would share a little bit, but now it's like, boom, it's a whole nother expansion of thought. And it's because I sat at the foot of one that was greater, similar to what you said, uh, Brother James sat at the feet of his father and had to learn and be introduced and had to study a certain school of thought before he was uh, verified and credible. Before he was uh, verified and credible. That's right. That's right. So, you know, I, I mean, the thing about it is, is that everyone seems to be living like a parable. You know, everyone is, their walk is different. You know, the dynamics in the house or the family may be different. Um, even the way people grow up and their experiences, some without their father or some of the father was there and maybe they just was always going back and forth with each other. Maybe there's a lot of hurt, but everybody has a different dynamic. And, you know, I know with you and, and, and dealing with you, you you touch a lot on patriarchy because that's your style. That's your experience. That's what you're going through. But it doesn't deviate from you 
having the understanding of the scripture because you see patriarchy all throughout the scripture it started in the very beginning did he not say for i am pleased because he's my begotten son he's come to what do the will my will i mean he basically said i'm not going to speak my word but my father's word me and my father is one you see what I'm saying? So a lot of people, you know, they teach the scripture or they teach or they their walk is a reflection of really their experience in their life. And some people mm-hmm. teach through the lens of hurt. Right. And they transfer that Absolutely. hurt to other people because they they've not had a, a solid figure in their in their house, their father. Yeah. When all it takes, even if you didn't have that, go back to him. And talk to him and have that conversation. If you have to both have to be on your knees and cry together, whether he was an abusive father or not, you have to do that because you need that in order to heal. You need that in order to go forward in such a way Mm -hmm. where the most I can be pleased with you. Because if you don't do that, I don't care how much you know. I don't care if you are the best teacher in the world. I don't I'm not even sure that the father is even listening to you because. Mm. You have not did what he's commanded, which is to honor your father and your mother. That is very simple to do. You don't have to stay yeah. hurt. You don't have to stay with this pain that you are, you know, that you inflicting on other people all because of your personal circumstances that you may be ignorant of or whether it derives from, you know? Mm-hmm. Man, you who man. Oh man, you, you got me excited. Was, uh, sorry, man, you, but you know it's it's, it's yeah. Man, you you saying so many things because you know in this awakening, it's almost as if the person with the most information should be the greatest and has this right to lead, this right to have the biggest voice because they have the biggest or or the greatest abundance of information, but. That's so so to me, it's almost like eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're getting the knowledge, the knowledge, the knowledge. Mm. You're executing your judgment and your will um, and you're knowing the difference between um, this and that. You're eating from that tree. Which is is good. okay? but have you eaten from the tree of life, which is also in the midst of the garden? Do you understand the way that the father gives life is what we're talking about today? And that is through family. The only way that you can extend your life from generation to generation is eat from the tree of life. And that is through the family structure. That's the only way. We don't believe like uh, Ray Kurzweil and the singularity where we're going to transfer our consciousness into a machine and then we can go from machine into a body. We don't believe that. But my brother just said that when you see him, you see his father. So long after his father is dead and gone, he'll still be here. His ministry work will still be being done by one that he's had such an amazing impact upon. That's eating from the tree of life. The life of this man is continuing. The life of Abraham is still with us today because we still venerate him. We talk about him. The Hamashiach even said, hey, when you sleep, when you die, you're going to rest in the bosom of Abraham if you're righteous. Oh, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> That's wow. beautiful. So we, it is. we have to ju- it is. we have to go back, family, and just slow it down. Information is good, but are you actually living the things that you're learning? Is the purpose of your learning to practice and to implement or just to uh to speak down or to vaunt yourself as the person that everyone should go to? That's that's really for that person to interpret, that's that's none of my business. I try to focus on myself, but I had to catch myself with eating from that tree and assuming that if I learn all of these things, then I would be of greater benefits. And that's just not the case because the father wants someone that's obedient. And back to your point, if you know all these things, you're not obeying that fifth commandment. How can he really use you? 
in the way that he wants to use you because you're denying the principles that he put in place that he would never deny because if he did that, he would be denying himself. Does that make sense, Aki? A sense. I mean, everything has a foundation. You know, he said, I'm going to build my house or assembly or what have you on Peter. Like, because Peter believed in such a way where it was like, whoa, who revealed this to you? You see what I'm saying? So there has to be a foundation. You cannot skip the basics. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people out here eating a lot of meat, I'm sure, without consuming milk. That's very detrimental to your health. That's just mm-hmm. the way it works. You know what I'm saying? You, you, some of us want to do that. But at the same time, too, how you treat each other matters, bro. Like It does. Appearing to the throne of the Father in the way you appear in his presence matters. It yeah. really does. You just can't say, well, just because you feel this feel good through your skin, just because you feel the, your hair stand up because you heard some beautiful music. You know, Hasatan also comes like an angel of light. So he can trick you. He can make you believe that you're so convicted in your belief that the Most High is even talking to you. That's mm-hmm. how bad he That's is. Bad he is. To the point where you even believe your conviction where you believe it and you say, the most high told me this, the most high said this, the most high, mm. the most high, the most high. I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? So, so now it's like, what, what is Isaiah talking about? Mm. So who is he warning me about when he says, like, this person, woe to them that said, thus says the most high. Like, who is he yes. talking about? So when we read the scripture and then we hear each other speak, you see what I'm saying? See, I believe the word. I'm going to say that again. I believe the word. Abraham didn't even have it written physically, but he understood and believed and he just obeyed. So it was counted for him as righteousness. Now, for us to have all this knowledge to know that our patriarchs and our forefathers, foremothers did whatever they did. For us not to have that understanding, these basic things, when you find yourself, even though you feel like you may have all this great knowledge, if you find yourself saying, the most I said, the most I said, Isaiah warned of us these things. How could you not keep mm. these things in remembrance to know that that can be, that can be a stumbling block for other people? Because look, we all Dang. read the scripture. We know what it says. Dang. You see what I'm saying? So we just have to be careful and discerning even ourselves. That's why we have to die daily. We have to discern what it is that's been put in us. What it is, how did I grow up? What are some experiences maybe that can skew my belief into thinking that, okay, the most high is either talking to me or not talking to me, vice versa. Go back to your dad. Trust me, you it's going it'll show you a lot. And the thing about your physical father it will come out. You just it it will come out of you. He is gonna come out of you some kind of way. If you don't right. deal with whatever it is that may have not been congruent with the father, and when I'm saying the father in the Shamaim, between you and your physical father, you have to deal with that, bro. You have you have to make sure you and your dad is in one alignment. Because right now, if you in this walk and you mad at your dad. That shows you right there you got a problem. Mm. I'm going to say that again. If you in this walk right now and you got some type of feelings about your dad this day and you don't have that shalom, if there's somewhat of a tension, then you need to go back. Handle it. Right. Just like that. That simple. No, that, that's a heavy thing. And that really gives it legs and gives us, you know, greater understanding. Like when, when you think of this person, if your heart skip a beat you and your your first thought is, I ain't thinking about that, dude. You suck your teeth. You do any of those things. That means you have some an art, some unforgiveness in your heart that you got to go back and you got to put principles over your passion. Put the principle that the father told me to do this, that regardless of how I feel about it, I must uh, put my ego and my pride to the side. And even if they may be wrong, if they may have wronged you, if you be the bigger person, quote unquote, and mend that relationship, that means 
that your children will honor you. And I and I want to back that up with the text real quick in uh in Sirach or um Ecclesiastes chapter three. It says uh three and you know what? Let me just go up to three and three. Whoso honoreth his father makes an atonement for his sins, and he that honors his mother is as one that lays up treasure. It and it's, this is without condition, family. It's not well if it's it's only if they were a righteous father or a righteous mother. No, it's not this conditional honoring that the father required. No, you honor. It don't matter what they've done. You honor. Why? Because you're mine. And if I had given you the faith, because the scripture says was saved by grace through faith and that not of itself, it was a gift of the most high. He gave you the faith to believe him at every point. You did nothing but the following the code that he gave you. <laughs> so how could you not do this part of it? And it will, in essence, give you long life. And that's what it says in, uh, in well, let's go to verse five. It says, whoso honoreth his father shall have joy in his own children. And when he makes his prayer, he shall be heard. So you know what, Lorvins, I'm going to flip the scripture around. I'm going to give the inverse, the negative confession. That whosoever does not honor his father shall not have joy in his own children. And when he, and when he makes his prayer, he shall not be heard. What you he think about that? Be heard. That's the what scripture. You think about that? Can we circumvent the scriptures? No. Can we circumvent the instructions of the Most High? No. You cannot say, well, I get, I've been given the authority, you know, because I have the Ruach and the spirit of Amashiach oh. to be able to go in authority and oh. declare these things. Who gave that authority to you? Because if you say that's right. the case and you dishonor your father, you are a liar. Let you who will be yeah. true and every man what? A liar. So if the scripture says what it says, there's always there's duality in life, no matter what. There's always duality. If it says this, the opposite of it is, is also true. So it's true in both instances. So you so if it say, well, if you dishonor it, your father, and what was that? Let's read that verse one more time. Uh, verse five. verse uh, verse five says, Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he makes his prayer, he shall be heard. That's right. So some of us have children. I don't have none yet. And the most I will bless me, but he hasn't yet. If you are not enjoying your children. Well, the scripture tell you what time it is and then you have to honor your mother. So if you don't do none of these things, then it's like you carry these burden. Then you have to understand that you are not in Shalom, bro. So your and prayers, I, most likely, I'm not going to say that it's not being heard because I don't know what you and your father has gone through. But if you have not gone to that litmus test the scripture has put put forth, then chances are, bro, your prayers ain't being heard. And I can only right. say that because I got to stand by the word. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, and you that is very sure footing. It's a strong foundation. For I'm persuaded, whose report shall we believe? I'm going to believe the report. She's not yours. Uh, yeah. Right? If, he, if he said it, because he cannot violate the principles that he put in the earth. And that's why the scripture says that if you honor your father, you will have joy in your own children. Your own children will reciprocate the honor that you gave to your father. But if you have not honored your father and your mother, there will be no reciprocation. They will not honor you. You have not earned that. They will That's leave right. the first chance they get and understand, you know, everybody reads, you know, Genesis 49, where, you know, Jacob spoke blessings over all of his sons and it's still happening today. The father validated it. And I want to read verse nine. And this is why. For the blessings of the father establishes establishes the houses of children but the curse of the mother roots out the foundation when that father speaks a life over that child it establishes that house go back and read genesis 49 if you disbelieve it 
That is the principle that the father that put the in the earth that, that he will never deny. And if you say um, that you can circumvent, as you said, Lawrence, and get to the father, man, to hell with my father. I heard brothers like, man, I, ain't, I don't want to talk to that nigga. Yeah, I'm like, what? Bruh, then you just finished know, doing, a broadcast. Finish doing a Bruh, broadcast. Bruh, it is so disrespectful. Bruh, is so because, disrespectful. um, let me let, let me read verse 12, man. Um, I'm gonna go back to 10. I'm sorry. Glory not in the dishonor of your father, for your father's dishonor is Ooh, no glory. Unto you, no just because your father may be you. down on his luck and you think you making a little more money and you walking in a certain understanding that you're greater than him. That is no di that is no honor for you. That is a shame for you. And you should try to help him. And you should try to help. Him. Man, let me get that, man. Let me get that. I mean, you got some brothers out here, man, like not just those that are awakened. I'm talking about in life period. See, when I talk. I'm talking about life, period. It's not all just about those that are awakened. We are brothers that are not awakened, that are Israelites. And I think we forget right. that. I think we forget that. That's right. So my thing is, is that when your father is at a point where it's like, there's a lot of shame there. And he's dishonored the most high because his father didn't teach him. And some of that has fizzled into your life. Some of us gloat about that as if, you know, oh, yeah, he ain't he a, he a deadbeat dad and, blah, 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 and all this and that, man. You know, I ain't, I... Bruh, that reflects on you. Kane, say so that. So the thing about it is, the thing about it is, if, you, if your father is living a life of dishonor, that's a burden in itself. How do you change that? How do you change that curse Pray so that you can yes. be an honor? Of your dad. I mean, shouldn't you love your dad enough to restore his name? Again, aren't we trying to restore the name of our father, which is in mm -hmm. the Shamayim? Right. So if we say, man, forget Solomon and forget all these guys that messed up, man, you're doing that unto Yahuwah. You that's some dangerous grounds you treading on. And you think the father. Is gonna deal with you in such a way to where you say forget your dad. At some point, he might be like, "What you gonna say about me if I put you in a situation?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You can't even honor your natural dad, and you trying to honor a dad you can't see. You gotta be crazy. You gotta be crazy. Mm. See, he put everything that we need in this physical earth realm to understand him. Heaven and earth declares his glory. It just so happened that we come from the earth, from the dust. And he put principles in place in order for us to align with. And those that don't align with those principles, you're going to consume error. And the fruit of that will be your own destruction. It does not matter if you know who you are. Knowing who you are is not the litmus of uh, getting access into the kingdom. Why would the father give you access to the kingdom? How many Passovers have you kept? How many day of atonements have you kept and you still got this art in your heart and you never healed it? That's when Man, he says, I hate, oh, that's that's I hate your feast days. It doesn't even matter Man. because you got so much malice, anger in your heart toward the one that you came from. And had the unmitigating goal and audacity to invoke Israel, to say that you are part of a man. Because make no mistake, Israel is a man. You don't believe it? Let's go back to uh, ex um, Ezekiel 37. Everybody knows that the dry bones are the whole house of Israel. Uh, That's right. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, Lovers. Let me switch out this battery. I'll just cut this part out. Will you, uh, all right, Ike, you still there with me? All right, let's jump right back into it. So if you don't grasp the concept that Israel is a man, it's not just this, this spiritual figure, this, this sky daddy that you can just invoke and 
do violence to the lineage from which you came from, you're missing the essence of what the father was trying to convey. He wanted a nation. Those nations came from one man, one man with 12 sons that he would use to execute his will in the earth. If you have ought with men and with fathers, you will not be a candidate to be a part of this kingdom experience. Why? Because you deny him. You've denied the pattern that he's put in place. Um, I want to read one other text, if I could. Uh, let's, let's go down um, to verse 11. It says, for the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. And a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. Your glory, what you gain goes back to the source. You think that this is about you. And you said something. Hallelujah. You said you should be thankful that the father is using you to redeem your father's name, to redeem your father's bloodline. He chose you. You're the foundational piece that he wants to use in redeeming that bloodline. Even if that man never did nothing, he did enough. He got you here. Never did nothing. He did enough. Hallelujah. Honor him. And that honor will be given to you by your children. And that honor will be given to you by your children. The most high is so amazing because you try to figure out his mind, man. It's a futile mission. You see what I'm saying? And the most high, he'll use you for his glory to magnify his name to the point where you you there's a chance you still won't make it to the kingdom. <laughs> Absolutely. To me, it's mind-boggling how he uses people because he wants your heart. But the way your heart has to be, it has to be so pure. You see what I'm saying? Pure enough, at least. To where he's acceptable, to where he said, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll show mercy. Because he said, well, I give mercy to who I want and show mercy to who I don't want to show mercy. You know what I'm saying? So he does what he wants. So the thing about it is, is that you have to put yourself in prime position, man, to be like, you know what, Mosai, work in me in such a way. Remove all this hostility that I have towards my father for it to be worthy. Because I'm telling you, he will use you to magnify his name and then trash you. Because mm. you don't want to do what he says do. Because the instruction come from the beginning. You mm. will not circumvent his ways. His mind is not like ours. Like when you really start to think about the father, he is cut and dry. He Absolutely. is cut and dry. You do this. If you don't do this, then this is the consequence. So if he say you don't honor your father and your prayer is not being heard, well, how are you even saved? Because if he's not listening, that means his back is turned. And Ooh. someone who has their back turned to you, they don't want to talk to you. Like it's a it's a it's a pure you can you can picture it physically. Someone just yelling and crying and, and worshiping and praising, but his back is turned. Mm. Bro. Man, I... in, the, in the physical, we don't understand it. <laughs> in the physical, we don't understand it because it's like, how could this person be screaming and yelling in, in such a way, but then he gets no attention? But then you be like, oh, man, we what? We fall back on the emotional part of it. We, mm -hmm. Oh, man, he crying. That means it means something. Not always. Nah, that person could be faking the whole time. Right. They got real active tear ducts. That's all that means. <laughs> so, you know, you know, one 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 text that, that came to me was that you know, Ephesians five one, and five. It says, For we know that no whole monger, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Hamashiach and of Elohim. Why is that? What idol have you placed in your mind that you're worshiping from? that won't allow you to go back, humble yourself under the mighty hand of Yah, he'll exalt you in due time, humble yourself and go back to your father, to go back and fix it. Go to your mother, fix it. Or do you have another voice that comes from another man 
meaning this dominant global satanic thought system, another man that is telling you that's not necessary. It doesn't take all that. You're okay. The father has chosen you. See, you prayed the other day and your prayers came true. You don't need to go back and do that other stuff and repair those relationships. That is idolatry because it did not come from Yah. So it had to come from some other deity and you could be that deity. You could, there is a God that is in your mind that's telling you what is or is not necessary and it is in Con it is conflicting with the scriptures of the Most High Yah. And that's why you have, in essence, become an idolater. I just wanted to add that little bit, Akeem. I just wanted to add that little bit, Akeem. Yeah, because because scriptures say you got to kill the flesh, right? But your flesh is so hurt. See, you're looking at it from an eye. Some people, they look at it from an idealistic way. Like, it's theoretical. Like, that hurt is just theoretical. Like, there's nothing tangible to it. Oh, it's just a thought process. If I just can maybe fill myself up with praise and worship, or if I can just fill myself up with the busyness of the Most High's work, perhaps maybe he'll ignore all that other stuff that's going that's on. That's escapism. When your flesh is really what has taken, you see what I'm saying? Your flesh has taken over to the point where you may even be in a reprobated state. Mm. To where you've convinced yourself that there's nothing wrong with me. I can just continue to do the work of the most high. I don't have to go fix anything with my dad. I don't have to do none of that because the word of the most high is in me. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've pride myself. I've lift myself and exalted and enlarged myself in such a way where not even the instruction in the most high matter as something as basic as saying, honor your father and your mother. That is dangerous territory. Now, I'm not saying once you've dealt with your father and he still heart is still hardened, then, you know, the dynamics would be different. But this is for yourself to where when you deal with your father, he said, Father, I have did all that I have can. You know, I've, I've gone to my father. I've, I've, I've cried and I've sincerely repented. I've sincerely to ask him for, uh, to forgive me for what I may have wronged him or, you know, vice versa. Even if he didn't say, I'm sorry. Only until then you, you should be able to get Shalom. Now it may be uneasy sometimes and it's disappointing that your father didn't come through, but that's okay. But at least you've done your due diligence to what? To try to restore your father, to try to say, you know what? Man, the most I is dealing with me, Dad. I'm really trying to restore your name, things of that nature. But man, if you one of those who's refused to do that, just mm. about everything you say is gonna come out of the, you know, is gonna come from that place of that flesh that's angry. And you fooled yourself to think that you're okay, but you're really not. Mm. Man, you made so many great points, but I thought about the words of our big brother, our soon coming King Hamashiach, Yahushua. When he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We understand that That's right. all of our fathers were not living a righteous lifestyle, yet I find no fault or judgment that I'm going to execute against them. That's not my place as a son. I'm right. going to pray for them. I'm going to ask the Father to forgive them, to have mercy upon them. I may have gone back and tried to make the relationship right, but he won't accept it. Hallelujah. That's okay. Well, it, right. it may not be okay, but you have to get to the point to where it can't be anything other than what it is, and I no longer have ought or find fault with them. So when I, when their name is mentioned, That's I right. don't get upset. I don't get teary eyed. None of that. I'm good. I'm in Shalom because I've done everything that I can do according to the scriptures. And see, th this is part of, you know, something that's just near and dear to me, Lorbens. I feel like it is part of uh, my obligation and my burden to help to restore to return the hearts of the fathers back to the sons. 
in the heart of the sons or children. That's that's really if you look at that word in the uh, in the Hebrew is bane. To return the heart of the children back to the father before he comes to smite the earth with the curse. We have to look at this thing soberly and just know that if I have to give out a certain amount of love, mercy, that the father will give that back to me, that even if they haven't earned it, that's okay. Where I may not have earned it in my son's and my daughter's life, that's going to be imputed unto me as righteousness. So please consider these things that we've shared. I thank my brother Lorvins for coming and sharing his perspective, for sharing how he views uh, patriarchy and his relationship with his father, how his family has benefited, how he's walking in that very same mantle. Oh man, it's a beautiful thing. Brother Lorvins, you got anything you want to say? Uh, any upcoming events, upcoming dates, any closing words? Please, my brother. Oh uh, man, uh, praise the most high, man, for allowing us to have this conversation. You know, I know that's something that's dear to you because, you know, people may see you and they see you talk about patriarchy as if you worship patriarchy. A lot of people, you know, the scripture talks about always inclining to hear your ears to hear. You must also seek a matter, seek a situation, because sometimes we may hear things because of how we have our little westernized ways of thinking. We dismiss what people say based on the words that they use, but you don't get the full context and understand. It's the same thing as in misinterpreting scripture by not getting the full context of anything. A lot of us, we judge each other in such a way and miss the full context of what it is that you're judging. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I've been having conversation with you, and I can co-sign that you love Abba Yah. Oh, through the son Hamashiach. Absolutely. But Abba Yah is our father, though. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's still patriarchy. <laughs> P- I mean, you know, the thing about it is when people hear buzzwords... <laughs> L people are saying they got a problem. It I'm sorry. I know we got a slight <laughs> delay. Like, I know people I'm get sorry, triggered. They'll, they'll say they got a problem with patriarchy and then get down there on their knees and say, "Our Father who art in heaven." Our Father who art in heaven. The pure hypocrisy. That's what I'm trying to say. Because what's happening is Israelites are people. We're not lending an ear. They always say, hear, O oh, Israel. Hearing is just not an abstract word where you're hearing. It means doing, obeying. You see what I'm saying? It means acting upon. The Hebrew is a concrete language, so our action has to be concrete. You see what I'm saying? So the idea is, is that you have to hear things in context. You have judge matters in context. You see what I'm saying? You have to make sure you understand. When you hear the word patriarchy, like me, I don't stress patriarchy all the time. When I I live it. Right. <laughs> Simple as that. But yeah. there are people the most I is going to put here to talk about it, though. You see what I'm saying? So the word itself should not trigger you. It's no different than the word polygamy triggering people also. It's just a word. <laughs> patriarchy is just a word yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's the same thing the people hearing the word church it triggers them Yes. you see what I'm saying people hear the word praise and worship the father it triggers them mm-hmm. because there are some who don't like to praise and worship when they hear that praise and worship they think of church but they don't forgot that the most high inhabits the praise of Judah you see what I'm saying so People act in such a way where their personal, fleshly ways and the way that they were brought up always come through their ignorance when they hear something. You see what I'm saying? Some people may hear community and think, oh, my God, cult. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, my God, bro. It's, It's just amazing to me that how words are so powerful. That's why Scripture says there's power in the tongue. Power and language. Tongue is language. So when you speak and you say words, they can trigger things. And you have to like really 
humble yourself in such a way to say, you know what, let me hear this matter. Sorry to go into that, but I just have to go into that, bro, because people are triggered by their emotions so much that they end up missing what it is that the Most High is trying to show them. Yes. Instead, they just keep going, walking in ignorance, and still mm. doing the same thing, what? Over and over, so they become yes. what? Insane. Yes. Scripture talks about that. What's going to happen to us? We was going to be some mad people walking yes. around here just mad. Yes. All right, so, but... Man, I appreciate the opportunity, bro, just coming on here to give some insight on what the Most High has been doing with me personally okay. and uh, my life and my mission and my walk with the Most High, um, where I let no man deter me or be a stumbling block and what it is that the Father has shown me. You see what I'm saying? There's men that he placed in my life that I honor. You know, I have elders. People don't understand. I have elders that have skin in the game. Right. I'm talking about decades. Right. That teaches me certain. Th I don't just throw their name out out there like that. But when you see me, trust me, I'm not just doing this on my own. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I pray that people can see that the Most High is working through me in such a way because He said, "You know them by their fruits." You see what I'm saying? And and even if I needed correction and things of that nature, trust me. I have people who don't mind just giving it to me. Um, right. As far as like, you know, where I'm going to be, you know, this weekend I'll be in North uh, Tennessee, Knoxville at the Caribbean Jerk Festival. Pray that we can at least, you know, get one soul to jump on board this train um, to uh, the kingdom. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, last year it was like over 5,000 people was there. Um, it was such a big deal. You got Verizon now sponsoring this events and some major corporation so i anticipate there'll even be more people there more opportunity to bring people on this train um you know the father sends me where i, I just go and you know i have a propensity to be disobedient to the father in small way people don't i'm i'm disobedient all the time bro mm -hmm. all the time <laughs> but it's when it comes to doing things and just being able to like discern him and say oh do this and do that you see what i'm saying um but at the end of the day, it's like Jonah. He always puts something on the path to get me right there to be obedient in what it is that he wants me to do. And because of obedience, the Father's really blessed me, man. And he's really mm -hmm. been, um, he put his eyes on me. And mm -hmm. he don't take his eyes off of me. And I know when I disappoint him, man, it's it really brings shame to me. Sometimes I even cry about it. Um, because I, dis I disappoint him. Even in his walk, I disappoint him. You know, I'm not a perfect man. But the thing about it is the father is looking for that heart that's willing to say, you know what, I'm sorry and mean it. And then just really that contrite and broken spirit, man, you got to have that. And so that way he can be pleased with you whenever you do offer something to him um, so that he can be pleased and say, well, done and faithful servant. So, man, I appreciate the opportunity, bro. I pray that the most I bless you, your family, your children, your father, I mean, the whole house and that he increase you even more so that when you speak on his behalf, that hearts and mind can change. Hallelujah. Toda for those words. I receive it. I reciprocate it. Back to you. May the Most High bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you. Uh, may he be gracious unto you and lift up his face, his countenance upon you, uh, and to give you peace. And they shall put their name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. So just wanted to just speak that, man. It's been a, another great, great conversation. Um, you guys, please take a second, like, share the video, um, you know, subscribe to the channel as we continue to grow. We're going to have more guests, more guests like our brother Lorvin's just come in and just share, man. We, we're demystifying what this thing is about. I don't try to invoke patriarchy all the time, but what we have to do is juxtapose this, this understanding that people have in their mind versus what it truly is, and we can show a difference uh, of way that we move in the Hebraic understanding. So, all right, family, uh, the most I bless you and keep you. We'll Man, talk soon. Right. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> shalom, shalom.